A few days ago, the trial version of Ragnar Prime landed in Rise of Kingdoms, and since then, a ton of you guys have been asking me what I think of this commander, if he's good, and who his best pairs are. So today, we are finally going to answer those questions. I'm going to give you guys all of my thoughts and opinions on Ragnar Prime, and honestly, this might be a little bit hyperbolic, but I actually don't think people are hyping up Ragnar Prime enough because I think, and we're going to go over the numbers today, but I'm almost positive he has the single strongest active seal in the entire game which is insane because we're talking about commanders like Julia Leong and Liu Che which are like on a whole different level but I double check the numbers and I think it's true maybe I will have to triple or quadruple check but you guys can hold me accountable in the comment section below but needless to say Ragnar Prime is infantry meta of course of course there, I don't think that there's any way to go around that and over the past couple of days I have been managing an alliance in Age of Empires mobile I'm sure you guys have seen that on the channel I have have been actually addicted to the game it is sucking up a ton of my time in the past few days and in those few days we've had other content creators here on YouTube testing out Ragnar Prime I think Shappy Gaming was the first one that I saw post or go live about this I know of course Chiskel did his testing in an Ark of Osiris practice match and so there's been a lot of testing for Ragnar Prime and I'm going to try to remember to link those guys in the description below but surprise surprise Ragnar Prime is super strong but again I don't think he's hyped up enough and so we're going to talk about that in today's video but first what's going on guys cheers before we jump in make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and consider subscribing we are so close to 80,000 subscribers which is crazy okay so I just made a pretty bold claim at the beginning of the video saying that this is the strongest active skill in the game I do think that is correct but I'm talking about raw damage okay because obviously this skill has no debuff there's no debuff here it is just raw AoE and I'm talking about the expertise so it's kind of hard to compare this to other commanders for example we look at commanders like CPO Prime who has what I thought to be a similar damage factor it's actually not Ragnar Prime is way stronger but CPO has a really powerful three second health debuff it's 30 percent health reduction for three seconds that's crazy right very strong debuff there we also have debuffs on Guan Yu for example he has a three second silence which is great we have the incredible debuff on Zhuge Liang troops hit by the skill deal 15 percent less damage for three seconds so not only is he dealing a massive amount of AoE damage but he's got a huge debuff for five targets so you could make the argument that those commanders have better active skills but what I'm arguing is that Ragnar Prime has the highest maximum damage factor potential out of any skill in Rise of Kingdoms so let's talk about it and in order to do that we're breaking out a spreadsheet ladies and gentlemen that's how you know we really went into the weeds here for this video this video took a little bit of time so definitely drop a thumbs up if you haven't yet but anyway we're going to be comparing Ragnar Prime to a couple of other suspects that people are comparing him to obviously Julia Leong is an outlier here but I'm just using him as an example as to how good the active skill is on Ragnar Prime so there's nobody out there that's considering replacing Zhuyi Liang for Ragnar Prime they're not the same troop type unless you're talking about the KVK where you can use Ragnar Prime as any troop type which is awesome but you'll see what we're going with this in just a second but here we can see in this column this is just the damage factor listed on the commander's active skill okay this is William Wallace of course and we can see the total number of targets that you're able to hit here with those commanders so of course William Wallace is a single target commander technically if he's being hit he hits more targets we'll talk about that later that mechanic is not nearly as good as you think it is unless you're playing in an Imperium or in a Ark of Osiris well in Ark of Osiris where you will often be fighting until you frowny face most players in most kingdoms do not fight until they frowny face typically you want to retreat around 50 percent because after that is when your trade starts to get really bad and you are just needlessly filling up your hospital when you don't have to do that you could just go back to your city and refresh now of course there are some instances where you have to to fight until you frowny face like in the case of king's land for example right like there's some instances you will have to fight till you frowny face a lot of times most players especially free to play players especially low spending players your average player shouldn't be fighting till they frowny face unless it is like make or break do or die we either win or lose kvk if you do not frowny face right now anyway i'm going off on a tangent here what you can see in the total damage section and just to be clear i'm going to be very honest this is napkin math okay obviously nothing in this spreadsheet is being put into a damage formula I'm showing you the raw numbers on a napkin basically and you can use some simple logic to arrive at some useful conclusions about how good Ragnar Prime actually is based on his 
active skill we'll talk about stats later as well okay because that's very important attack defense health and march speed but what we're looking at here is the sort of raw three target damage factor hit okay if you hit one target it's 2200 but as you guys know and as you can see on the screen over here each additional target reduces the damage to each target by 15 percent and so we have a fun little formula here where you multiply the damage factor by 0.85 and then you take that number and you multiply that by 0.85 and then you times that by three because you are I ideally hitting three targets here and with a half circle aoe ragnar prime will often be hitting all three targets in a massive murder ball fight which is e even if he only had a fan shaped area instead of a half circle which it says a fan but like it's a big fan even if it was just like the same as cp or guan yu this would almost wouldn't change anything like he's so good so the fact that you get half circle is wild but this column right here the additional damage is what like completely breaks ragnar prime and makes his active skill way better than anybody is giving him credit for it is actually unbelievable that it works this way and i i actually missed this during his initial reveal because i i guess like subconsciously i just assumed that it wouldn't work this way but look what his expertise says it says all troops hit by this skill take additional damage every second for the next two seconds with a damage factor of 300. if you look at his regular unexpertise self it says the current target takes 300 damage factor for two seconds so this expertise is actually insanely good because it like triples the damage output of this additional damage okay it also raised the damage factor which is wild like this it's so good anyway the way that this works is a damage over time but it's actually way better than Sargon I know like a lot of people think of of damage over time in this game and they think oh my god it's awful and then they think of commanders like Sargon and they think well that's he's evidence that damage over time is bad and I agree with you Sargon is not good but it's be is for a different reason the reason Sargon's damage over time is bad is because his active skill says that for each basic attack you're dealing extra damage okay way different than the way that the expertise works on Ragnar Prime Ragnar Prime does not have to stay connected to the target for this additional damage to work but don't just take my word for it let's go ahead and test it really quick here in expedition here you can see we're about to use our active skill and as soon as it launches I'm gonna run away okay so we hit him with the active skill and look he's still taking red number damage even though I instantly retreated as soon as the active skill was launched and I know Genghis Khan's picture was in the way so let's just do it again for you really quick just so you know it's not a fluke okay as soon as he casts I'm gonna run away and we see boom and boom there it is 549 two times you see the damage is ticking on the target even after you retreat which means the way that this skill actually works is not like Sargon but in fact it initiates a damage over time at the time that the skill goes off and then whether you retreat or your enemy retreats whatever they will take that damage guaranteed no matter what unless they go into their city if they go into their city then the bad the battle ends right away so I guess that's like the only exception right but assuming that they're just like retreating back the next two turns they're going to take that damage which makes this damage over time way better than the damage over time from Sargon because oftentimes the problem with Sargon is the way that most people fight in the open field is they go in and out of combat as they get swarmed by a bunch of people right you're hitting a target and you keep hitting them and then eventually you're the one that's overextended and you're the one getting hit and so then you start retreating Reading, right that's how a lot of people play open field fighting in rise of kingdoms and so what this means is after you hit the field with that half circle you hit all three targets with your aoe and then even if you retreat immediately or even if they all retreat immediately and you're no longer dealing normal attack damage to them they're still going to take this additional dot damage which is wild because all troops will take it that's all three troops and it's 300 per second for two seconds so that is 600 damage factor per target for three targets at max so that is 1800 additional damage factor that you are guaranteed to deal them if you connect with them just once that's it unless they go back to the city of course okay now I guess they could jump into other things like an alliance structure or like maybe a resource node I haven't tested that of course because you can't hit resource nodes here out on the map but you get my point okay those are all nuanced occurrences but like 95 percent of the time okay you're guaranteed to get that 1800 again assuming you actually hit 
three targets you could just hit one and then you only get the 600 right but this part of the expertise is what makes his active skill arguably in my opinion and again we'll go over the data here I think it's the hardest hitting active skill in the entire game now in this category for all commanders I take into account some of the bonuses that they're going to get or the buffs that they're going to have active for their active skill so in the case of Ragnar Prime his fourth skill says that every time your troops rage reaches 70 percent you gain a 15 percent bonus to skill damage dealt for four seconds in the examples that we're using here Ragnar Prime will be the primary and this is the conclusion that was arrived at by Shappy Gaming and by Chiskel Gaming it seems like the skill tree is just the way to go here we'll talk about that later but if Ragnar Prime is the primary then you're going to have this bonus to skill damage up when his active skill goes off also for the rest of the numbers that we go through here I assume that this bonus does not apply to this additional damage and that's because I don't know if it does or not because I can't attack barbarians with him yet and I'm too lazy to go into a practice match but I'm just assuming that it doesn't apply and that's going to give us the worst case scenario for Ragnar Prime so keep that in mind we're looking at the worst case scenario for these commanders here okay here we have other damage buffs and this includes things like being Ottoman Empire running the Twilight Fall City skin having the wedge formation give you five percent bonus skill damage right these are three different ways that you can get five percent extra skill damage and you're going to have them up all the time and they're always going to be affecting the active skill for Ragnar Prime the one and three target damage factor on average I guess and then we can average them together to just assume like okay on average this is how much damage factor we are getting out of the active skill from Ragnar Prime now remember what I said earlier this is napkin math okay this is very simple stuff I'm not we're just we're simplifying everything so we can compare it easily so you guys have an idea as to how good this active skill actually is and so with that being said let's compare this to William Wallace William Wallace has a 2400 damage factor he can deal 900 damage if he's being targeted which is often not the case because typically well first of all a lot of people don't target infantry oftentimes people will target well they're going to be first of all targeting your Nevsky that's out of position right because that just always happens these days for some reason and hopefully the developers can figure out why that is because it feels like a bug to me because the last KVK it was insane but most likely your calves are going to be out of position because of their March speed second in line there is going to be your archers people just target archers they're so powerful they have so much AOE people target archers and then third place in the priority list is going to be infantry now really people just hit what's closest to them right but my point is that like of all the armies that you have on the field the probability that it's your William Wallace that's being swarmed kind of low right kind of low or at least I would argue it's a lower probability than other commanders on the field right I think that's a safe assumption I never target William Wallace or infantry for that matter it's he doesn't even have a debuff why would I target him anyway their argument I'm making is that he's often not going to get this extra 900 but we put it in here anyway the bonus that you're going to get though for William Wallace's damage comes from that third skill it's a 40 percent increase but there's an 80 percent chance of it occurring which means one in five times it won't occur and so on average I gave him a 32 percent bonus here for other damage buffs we have his fourth skill which is going to give him 10 percent smite damage 10 percent normal damage which is 20 percent for his active skill and you're also going to have the arch formation which gives you another five percent so that's a 25 percent bonus there and so you could see that his single target hit is actually kind of insane you get a 57 percent bonus damage on average to a 2400 damage factor which is kind of wild right so if you're only hitting one target you're actually going to deal more damage with William Wallace than you will with Ragnar Prime but as you can see here the three target damage and this says five target because some of these commanders are five targets so that's why okay but you know for these commanders we're talking about three targets the three target damage hit his maximum damage output is way lower than than Ragnar Prime right so on average I mean your skill shots are going to be significantly stronger with Ragnar Prime and we can go through the list and we can reveal the same sort of data for for all of these commanders okay if we look at Guan Yu his additional damage comes from his fourth skill which occurs on average every other skill cycle so I gave him 700 instead of 15. he does not unfortunately have a skill damage bonus or I should say he does have a skill damage bonus if his active skill goes off when he has a shield you could argue that's like on average maybe a two percent three percent skill damage bonus right for simplicity I just left it at zero here he's going to benefit from the other buffs that Ragnar Prime would so civilization city skin and formation bonus right I mean that's the same for CBO here as well so you can kind of go through here and you can see like honestly the three target damage for Guan Yu is higher than the three target damage for William Wallace the average damage though is kind of where Guan Yu starts 
to like this is where you start to see the cracks in Guan Yu is that his average damage output per skill cycle is going to be a little bit lower than even William Wallace and that's even with William Wallace being a single target damage commander right now again I'm kind of giving William Wallace the benefit of the doubt here by assuming that occasionally you will be getting this I really think this is quite rare to be getting this to be honest with you but anyway we could do the same thing here for CPO and for CPO the additional damage comes from his damage over time ticks that you get I think it's on like a second or third skill he does have a 10 percent skill damage bonus on the expertise and so you can look at the numbers here but what I think is a little bit more interesting is if we reveal the numbers for Yui Liang and then we actually put in a chart so what you could see here is the same data you just looked at except I laid it out here in a bar graph and in red is kind of like the best case scenario maximum damage output for a single skill cycle in yellow is sort of the average amount of damage you could expect per skill cycle and then in blue is kind of like your you know if you only hit one target that's how much damage you could expect on average and so as you can see William Wallace shines in a world where we're only hitting one target and even on, from an average perspective he does beat out Guan Yu which is what we said before but besides that Ragnar Prime blows everybody else out of the water it's almost not even close like the additional damage he gets on the expertise is honestly wild and the fact that it's a half circle aoe is insane so here we see nearly 8,000 active skill damage factor from Ragnar Prime and that pushes his three target damage factor above a five target damage factor commander like Liu Che or Zhuyi Liang even in a scenario where Liu Che's active skill has a high, higher damage factor it's 2250 whereas Ragnar's is only 2200 and it hits five targets whereas Ragnar only hits three but the additional damage that you are most of the time guaranteed to get from Ragnar Prime because they can't just run away they're just going to get it okay that additional 1800 damage factor more than makes up for the fact that you're not hitting an additional two targets which is like actually mind-blowing and I think this is like pe people are not talking about this okay his active skill is arguably the single strongest AoE in the entire game now there's a couple of things that I want to put down here because I know someone's going to put a comment down below so let me just say it and get it out of the way here right there aren't as many commanders that resist smite damage as there are skill damage and so in this way you could argue that the Liu Che skill shot is still stronger because few th fewer things on the open field are going to be able to resist smite damage like they will for skill damage there's lots of skills and ways in the game that you can resist incoming skill damage so there's that however smite also has fewer ways to buff itself right there's lots of ways to get additional skill damage on your armies but there's not as many ways to get additional smite damage on your armies and we're getting there right there's more things coming out but as of right now it's more easy to get additional skill damage bonuses more commanders have it you also have again the civilization and city skin that's a flat 10 percent across the board for everybody and also some of these other commanders here in fact all of these other commanders have a debuff on the active skill except for William Wallace so CPO has a great health debuff we have a March speed debuff on Liu Che and we have a damage dealt debuff on Yui Liang we have a silence on Guan Yu you can't really quantify those things they're very good and so again from a raw damage perspective Ragnar Prime seems to be king but there's other factors that you have to consider when you decide do you use Ragnar Prime or do you use one of these other commanders right because like CPO Prime's damage output is insane right and if I'm being honest I think that this additional damage for CPO Prime it's probably a little bit too generous right it does have a long cooldown it is a damage over time and so like this this is really what pushes him above Zhuyi Liang when it comes to like total damage output and I think that that's not really fair right like will you get this every single skill cycle maybe not let's let's start let's say that you won't let's say it's 750 right and that'll make things possibly a little bit more fair when you compare these two but no matter how you cut it Ragnar Prime's out pumping out more damage that that's just the the conclusion that we can come to here in fact on average a Ragnar Prime skill shot will be about 28 percent higher damage factor than that of William Wallace it'll be about 35 percent stronger than a skill shot from Guan Yu and about 32 percent stronger than an average skill shots or skill cycle from CPO Prime so in all of these examples it seems like replacing one of these commanders with Ragnar Prime is going to have you dealing more damage with your active skills now again active skills aren't the complete picture you have to take into account stats okay there's lots of commanders that have decent looking active skills but horrible stats like CPO Emilianus for example great for rallies but in the open field he doesn't really like he doesn't have really any stats there which is crazy they really prevented him from being an open field monster with that which is which is really unfortunate but anyway let's take a look at the stat spread here and of course you will not find Zhuge Liang here because I was just using him to make a point there because a lot of people consider Zhuge Liang one of the strongest active skills in the game but here 
here we have the stat breakdown for these commanders here and you know you'll notice something pretty staggering about Ragnar he's got 40 percent bonus defense guys that's actually freaking ridiculous okay and he kind of struggles in all other areas let's just be real now he has a flat 10 percent march speed and really he has no attack but I gave him five percent because he will be vampiring some attack from the enemy which is actually insanely good because not only is it a buff it's also a debuff at the same time it is both things simultaneously and the probability it occurs is high it's like what is it 30 percent yeah it's a 30 percent chance whenever you launch or are hit with a basic attack and it's a 20 percent attack buff and debuff and a 30 percent march speed buff and debuff for two seconds it's a short duration but it will occur very often so in this case i just averaged this out to five percent attack and yeah i didn't really take into account the march speed here we gave we just gave him the 10 percent flat march speed you could argue that maybe on average it'll be i don't know two three five percent march speed if you want to but i'm not going to go that far into the weeds so if we compare ragnar prime's kit to the other commanders here you're going to see that there are many commanders that have much higher attack than him and he has no health as well which is definitely a bummer and so if you compare ragnar prime to a commander like William Wallace, for example, you might be able to argue that William Wallace has a better distribution of stats. I think Ragnar Prime is more tanky. I think I would rather take 40% defense over 10% health any day. It's a four to one rate. Like, yes, you take 40% defense over 10% health all the time. Yes, there are diminishing returns, but at a four to one ratio, that's actually insane. But the March speed is quite good here. You know, it, it's hard to say. I don't, I just don't value the attack on William Wallace that much when there's other places to get so much attack here, namely CPO and Guan Yu and Liu Che has decent attack as well. If you compare him to Guan Yu, once again, would I rather have 40% defense or 30 35% attack and 10% defense. That's a tough trade off, especially because Guan Yu's faster. I like the tankiness of Ragnar Prime, to be honest with you. And again, these, the, the five and 10% here, those are on average probably slightly higher depending on the vampire effect and how often it goes off. But I think these two stat spreads are kind of apples to oranges. It's really hard to compare them. One deals way more damage, one's way more tanky. It is what it is. CPO, though, definitely is better. CPO has got a better stat spread straight up. He's got a ton of attack. He has 20% health and he's got 20% March speed. Really it's 15% plus 10% outside of territory. So I averaged it out to another 5%. Sometimes it'll be 15. Sometimes it'll be 25. So I just put it right in the middle there. And then Liu Che again. Also, I think that's a better stat spread as well. Flat 20% March speed is great. 20% attack, 20% defense, also very good. It's, it's a nice spread. It's pretty even across the board. So he can fill some interesting shoes here though, right? Because if you'll notice, like there's actually not that much defense across all these commanders. There's, I mean, Guan Yu only has it because of his relic. William Wallace doesn't have any and CPO Prime doesn't have any either, right? So like there's actually some good candidates here for defense, namely in William Wallace or CPO Prime or even Liu Che. And we'll talk about that now. So now that we've compared to Ragnar's active skill, potential damage output and his his stat spread to other meta infantry commanders what do I think of Ragnar Prime do I think he's worth investing in and who should you pair him with I think that Ragnar Prime is arguably part of the single best infantry march in the game but it's not that simple of course it's not that simple right the real question is how much better is he than what's already there that's the real question and that's where you start to run into an issue of is it actually worth investing in or not so when we're talking about building the best possible infantry marches in rise of kingdoms how does Ragnar Prime actually change this well right now I would argue if you're only running one infantry march then you're probably running something like like this where you're just running the CPO prime primary the Liu Che secondary and you're popping off and this is a no-brainer they're both AOE commanders they both have debuffs on their active skill one of their debuffs is obviously much better than the other they both have March speed they have a good distribution of stats this pairing is great right it's a, it's the single best pairing I think the single easiest pairing to use would be this in my opinion although a lot of new players don't have Alexander the Great because many guides including some of my own have suggested skipping Alexander the Great I think that the play style of this March is is like you just turn your brain off and it just farms kills for you no brainer and then if you are like in an Imperium and you're fighting to sad face and you're just like a true Giga Chad you might make the argument that this is the single best infantry army in the game but I would say for most of us average plebs this would be the single best infantry army in the game the question is is Ragnar Prime so much better than CPO Prime that you would actually start recommending people run this instead and if you were going to do this I guess you would do I mean the 
the, the talent trees just have no synergy here unfortunately the thing is like if you want the 15 percent bonus on of skill damage on Ragnar's active skill I think he has to be the primary but the downside of that is that the skill tree offers like nothing to Liu Che right and so it's like you know the, the it's just a, a weird spot it's a weird spot to have these two commanders in will this pairing work yes will it be super strong yes is it worth benching CPO Prime for Ragnar Prime probably not right probably not the stat spread on CPO is great arguably better more well distributed and on average more March speed yes the active skill is stronger on Ragnar Prime but he doesn't have the debuff I would say if this is the pair that you're running you might just leave it alone and you're fine I'm not super convinced that you have to change this if this is the only army that you're running the question is though if you're running two armies what do you do well I think that you would run Ragnar Prime with CPO Prime over the Guan Yu I think Guan Yu is all right that's not to say that he is bad but I just think that like Ragnar Prime just hits harder yes you lose the silence but you're getting so much defense a much stronger active skill shot and also Ragnar Prime is very versatile you can use him as secondary where you can't use Guan Yu as a secondary ever which is awful and also Ragnar Prime in his special KVK can be used with any troop type right which is something that we can't forget and so I think that the Ragnar Prime primary and CPO Prime secondary is the best way to run this army the question is if you're running two infantry armies and you're not going to run Guan Yu well then you have a choice are you going to run William Wallace or are you going to run Alexander the Great from my past KVK experience I prefer Alexander the Great that's just me you might call me crazy but I've had like dozens of people be like yeah I don't know what it is but Alex is just insane maybe in my upcoming KVK I'll give William Wallace another try but like out of the gate I just was not super impressed with William Wallace I don't know maybe it's just me he just seemed to be just like Alex except slower that's the that's the reports that I got it's just a slower Alex so I, I don't know I'll try him again maybe depending on how good he does for the first fights but then I guess the question is no matter who you run here right the question is can you run three infantry armies now and if you can should you and if you do uh who and truthfully I don't know the answer until my next KVK but shout out to jungle warfare I know we were kind of theory crafting over on discord in DMs this is kind of where my gut has landed I I really hate taking Alex off of Liu Che because I feel like Alex just can't really hang without the expertise on Liu Che however he did get a nice relic and his March speed is great and just the in and out nature of the instant proc is just so easy to use that you're gonna farm with it and also you're gonna be super tanky from Ragnar and also also Alex has just by default tons of attack and so you get like a bunch of attack a bunch of defense and you get a bunch of March speed here so I like the idea obviously you run the William Wallace with Liu Che in that example and then you keep the Guan CPO forever and you're popping off the other thing that you could try and this is going to get a little controversial here if we come to the conclusion that Alex is officially power crept and is only usable with Liu Che and you won't be using with Liu Che because of William Wallace then who do you pair with your Ragnar Prime well Tark still hits like a truck and he's also still a skill damage based infantry commander even at 5515 he's just a vanilla beat stick right 2200 damage factor single target that's a little low I feel like if you're surrounded it's a little higher 25 but you're hopefully not being surrounded but also we have 40 percent attack okay well that pairs nicely with the 40 percent defense on Ragnar Prime 10 percent more damage to calves which are already suffering so you're gonna really be punishing those cavalry commanders and you get a little bit of March speed here as well now I think March speed is the biggest opportunity for this March because Ragnar Prime only has 10% and Tarek only has 10% outside of territory. You're going to steal some from the enemy, but this might be too slow of an army to run in the open field over. I will say 15% more damage and rage reduction, which is nice. So you're going to get the rage reduction here and you'll get the rage reduction from the William Wallace primary. You're going to have a lot of rage reduction on your armies here. So even though you're going to be pumping out a ton of damage with this, I just don't think that the March speed is up to snuff here, unfortunately, because I feel like it's like so close, right? Like if Tarek had like 15% flat March speed, then I'd be like, okay, maybe it's worth trying, but infantry are so slow already. It's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll give this a try for my upcoming KVK. And the last thing that I want to mention here, and you know, I'm not I'm not willing to write off the Guan Ragnar 
combo yet I would like to try it this keeps Guan Yu in the lineup it keeps your silence on the field you can run Ragnar as the secondary it's fine Ragnar just inherently in his kit is mega tanky and Guan Yu has literally like no tankiness at all so he kind of complements what Guan Yu is lacking and also Guan Yu has all the attack that Ragnar does not have plus Guan Yu has 15 percent March speed and it's not conditional whereas Tarx is so I'm not willing to write this off here and if you do that then maybe you look at something like this I, I know I know that that sounds like insane but like at the end of the day the reason that I am so disrespectful towards William Wallace is because he's just a single target beat stick like he doesn't have a debuff there's like the AoE is so conditional it's weird and it's not that high so like yeah there's really no synergy with CPO because he's not smite damage but like I don't know William Wallace as a secondary is just a really good beater which is fine I would suggest trying this but the problem is like both of these guys have talent trees that are completely like antithetical to one another right like the smite tree is like heavily on smite and there's none here for Ragnar and vice versa the skill tree is heavily on skill damage and there's none on Wallace so while this might make the most sense from like a stat distribution perspective and from a March speed perspective it spreads out good March speed across all these armies whereas like this you know obviously this is going to be much faster than this for example and this will be the fastest I don't know if I love the idea of this because there's just some anti synergy in the in the talent trees in general this combo is something that I don't think should be knocked until it's genuinely tried but if I were to bet like if I were a betting man I would say that the three army lineup here I'd be willing to bet it's something like this um but at this point when you start to look you know back to older commanders like Tarek who is only a single target hit and is kind of slow and you're looking back at kb k2 commanders like Alex without the Liu Che synergy I think this makes me feel like maybe infantry shouldn't run three I know that like this is the best spot that they've ever been in here but the problem is that the synergy for Alex is so exclusive and there is already somebody great for that pair and so that's where it's like I feel like we're kind of stretching ourselves to reach three and I also think that that's because there haven't been new skill damage based infantry legendaries in a while right I mean and that's why we're reaching back to these really old commanders um to, to kind of make that a thing and moving forward are we going to be getting more skill damage infantry I don't know maybe everyone said we wouldn't and then we did and so it's like you just can't write it off like yeah I know he's an anomaly like he's he's not part of a normal release cycle but like all bets are off the table like we wouldn't normally expect something outside the release cycle to begin with right so it's like I don't know maybe there will be more skill damage at this point you just can't say we don't know I, I'd be willing to bet that the next release for infantry is smite right I think that's what it'll be but like at this rate we didn't even think legendaries could be prime right so like all the rules that we thought were true have been thrown out the window so if you're thinking I'm not gonna get Ragnar because he's a skill damage infantry I think that logic is dog sh I think that he's better than Guan you should put him in a two army lineup and for what it's worth this is probably the two that I'm gonna be running for my upcoming KVK that being said I wonder if Chiskel thought about Trajan and I mentioned Chiskel because he's the only guy that I feel like still brings up Trajan but like I don't maybe he gives a ton of damage to him and then you could still rock this and then it's like you're kind of supportive kind of popping off I don't know man I don't know at this point I'm going way off into the deep end of theory crafting now the last question I want to answer here is let's say hypothetically you're running these two marches right now who is a higher priority to invest in either William Wallace or Ragnar Prime like if you have neither of these commanders right now which one should you go for and I think Ragnar Prime is going to survive much longer than William Wallace in your lineup if you're running two infantry armies and here's why William Wallace does not have a meaningful debuff and he doesn't have any AoE and if we assume that the next infantry release cycle will be a smite damage commander which I think a lot of people do expect that I think like smite is the way that infantry has been going then really it's going to be super easy to outclass William Wallace from a commander kit perspective you either need one of three things one you just need a higher single target hit which I mean if we look at the history of power creep that all almost always happens eventually uh, or you need a commander with a similar amount of damage but a meaningful debuff or you need a smite damage commander with AoE I think if our next infantry release is any one of those three things then William Wallace will be the first to hit the bench he's just 
he's just raw damage right um which you know not to say that he's bad but I think a lot of the value from William Wallace comes with his synergy with Liu Che because he's like the only one with this smite tree right now and the moment we get another smite tree commander with a higher damage factor or a similar damage factor with a good debuff or with AoE um I think Wallace is cooked I think he's sitting on the bench just like with Tarek and just like with every other just vanilla beat stick in the game I think that's gonna be the outcome unless unless whatever infantry garrison that comes with him is also so good that you would now run William Wallace with Liu Che and then the two new infantry together or something along those lines but then they'd have to also be better than CPO Prime and and Ragnar so yeah anyway if you're running these two I personally think like the William Wallace upgrade over Alex isn't that huge and so going for Wallace I, I don't think is going to make that big of a difference whereas going for Ragnar over Guan Yu I think that will be a meaningful impact his active skill is just better his stat spread is just better he's like five percent slower but the rest of his kit's more tanky uh, I think that's going to be a meaningful uh jump over on you compared to you know the slight maybe slight uh if negligible jump over your Alex and from a longevity perspective I think we're gonna run Ragnar Prime with CPO Prime for at least a year if not longer uh, I think that will be the one skill damage infantry March that you run for a very long time especially because I doubt we're going to get another steel damage infantry anytime soon although who knows the tldr is that ragnar hits harder than any other active skill in the game and he's super tanky in every way and he is as strong as we thought he would be possibly even stronger i feel like people aren't hyping him up enough yes i think he's worth getting is he a must-have for one infantry army no is he a must-have for two infantry armies probably yes especially because I know a lot of people did not get Guan Yu if you're newer to the game you probably skipped Guan Yu because his optimal distribution is 5155 which is like the hardest one to get in the game so a lot of people skipped Guan Yu he's kind of old if you're an older player you have him if you're a newer player you probably don't and if you don't great news you've got Ragnar with CPO Prime now I think that that combination is going to absolutely shred on the battlefield double AoE commanders there actually insane in crazy stat distribution it's gonna be fast it's gonna have a lot of March speed I'm excited to see what Ragnar Prime does in my upcoming KVK but those are all my thoughts and opinions on Ragnar Prime I think the hype is real I am all aboard the hype train I think he's one of the best infantry commanders in the game right now I think he's way more exciting personally than William Wallace I do I'm just gonna come out and say it boys like I know I know that he, he doesn't inherently have synergy with Liu Che but like if you ran Liu Che primary Ragnar secondary I feel like you'd be fine you'd be like yeah this actually just hits like a truck like objectively right so can he be in your one army lineup yes should he be I don't know it depends on who you already have I still think the debuff on CPO's active is like insane right so like maybe you just keep running that I think that's probably the play and he's a little bit faster but those are my thoughts and opinions on Ragnar Prime backed up with a little bit of napkin math and also again I will try to remember to link the test videos down below from the other creators shout out to them of course go ahead and subscribe and like to them and while you're down there go ahead and like this video if you made it all the way to the end and subscribe to my channel if you want more rise of kingdoms videos and click the bell to be notified the next time that I do post one comment down below your thoughts on Ragnar Prime what do you think about Ragnar Prime I'm curious to know I think people the hardcore infantry mains are probably a little bit upset that he's not a smite damage commander I think everyone else who casually runs infantry is probably super stoked I'm really happy for him I can't wait to expertise him and also I guess this should be mentioned as well we don't we still don't know how to get him right so like should you get him or not I don't even know how I can't even answer that question until we know how so like I don't know maybe we'll see anyway guys with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace